Hello everyone, this is Curtis Storr again, the Family Investor Trainer. And um, for those of you who don't know me or haven't been following my blogs, um, I'm on the verge of launching a great uh, training. But in the meantime, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm a real estate investor. This is not um, my job or my full-time Thing, but it's a, it's a thing of passion, something that's close to my heart, um, and that's the reason I'm doing the trainings for family investors because I, I find so many people out there need advice and they're getting incomplete advice, and that's something I'm I'm learning. I become a um, advisor on Investopedia. Um, last year, I got my life insurance license because. I wasn't getting the big picture. I could not find anybody who would sit down and tell me about what I just invested in because I was told by a wealth strategist that one of the things you must have is life insurance and, and not for several different reasons. The main main reason is to protect your assets in case of you know you become critically ill because they have critical care coverage in, in most policies. Um, and recent, and during that time, the last year, I've learned that also that there's policies that have long-term care. So I've actually switched over lately. I, I did a comprehensive policy review with a with another advisor who's been in the the industry for over, you know, 25 maybe 30 years. It doesn't look like he has been, but <laughs> anyways, um, a lot smarter than I am. He's an expert at this stuff, and and we sat down and we spent hours and hours, and he answered all my questions. I really appreciated that, but it took me getting my my license as a life and health insurance um, independent um, <clears throat> agent in order to to get in touch with those people. Basically, you know, all the hidden stuff behind that curtain that for some reason we're not learning. And so that's one of the reasons I've, I've decided to do this trainings and stuff with family investors. There's, I hear it all the time with people where they, they don't get all the information to make a really good decision. And that's, that's what I see also happening on Investopedia. And in front of you, you're seeing, seeing one of my um, answers. And it's, it's tough because a lot of the advisors, and maybe they're smarter than I am, they just focus on, on the, the question and give a more direct answer all the time. But um, like my training, I want to be able to feed you as much information without overwhelming you. That's why we do it at different levels. And um, that way you can absorb it little by little and not be so overwhelmed like, you know, I... I'm a financier, which is just a fancy title of someone who's good with numbers, and I understand these wealth strategies, and I read books all the time. I have stacks and stacks of books, and I use those for reference. I've used those to see what other people are saying out there, and even my level of education that, you know, because I've learned from some of the top wealth strategists and, and real estate investors and so on and so on, probably pay, paid over almost an upwards towards $150,000 to $200,000 for my education. And um, I still come across things that are a mystery. And, and, and even in those books, a lot of the things, they, they, the way they teach it is so confusing. I don't even want to continue to read about the strategy, even though I, I do, and I, I try to absorb it, and, and, and I have resources where I can go out and talk to people who do, you know, like portfolio managers they, with Series 7s, um, licenses, a lot higher education than I have in, in those areas. And the thing is, we don't, we can't know everything. So that that's my ob objective all the time, is to try to give people enough information so you can make a better decision. And you'll see here that this, this here, the question here was, I'm a senior in college and understand the importance of saving and investing. First of all, I kudos to this person being in college and thinking about saving and investing. 
obviously they're taking courses in finance and they're realizing that for some reason they've had an aha moment most I remember you know college days and and that you know I think beer and women were <laughs> the the only thing that I thought about during that time period anyways uh, <laughs> What are some of the key and important tips for starting out? Should I be putting money away so that the money, so that my money habits as well as compounding interest over the years is way ahead where I'd be without it? Big resounding yes. And down here you'll see my answer. I uh, There's a link to Investopedia, but my answer starts down here. And um, it is a great question. And you don't see Rosemary's responses, but I go over it. Her first thing she tells him is pay yourself first. And that's so true for so many reasons. Um, if We always put ourselves last in a lot of things. And that's not good. That's not good. If you're a parent, that's not good for your children. Because think about it and, and it's not good for yourself because if you keep if we keep putting ourselves last on the list what what are we saying to ourselves even though we're not saying you know you're you're a loser you're last you're you know I mean seriously we need to put ourselves first because what that does is is build, build a sense of self and and if you have children around you I don't have any children but but my great niece and my nie my niece, that's what they see because that's who I am. I I and, and I'm not perfect at it. Uh, there's a lot of things that that I put other people before me, which you know is not a bad thing all the time. But when it comes to money, it's one of the things that I go over in, in my trainings is is the money money mindset. Uh, say that fast several times <laughs> but the money mindset is basically how you think about money and and how you think about saving and this and that and, and I, part of the reason and, and I'm gonna tell you t tell everybody right now it's not your fault it isn't it really is not your fault we are bombarded day in and day out in school Everywhere you go, bombarded with inf misinformation. I call it misinformation because it's not complete. And and that kind of information is you should get you should get a four hundred one k. You should do this. You should do that. You should, you know, everybody's telling you do this, 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 but they're not saying you should look at all of it. And that's where I'm at. I really want people to look at all of it. Well, I digress. To get back into this, you have to pay yourself first. And the best way to pay yourself first is anything that's automatic. I mean, if you have to set up a savings account along with your checking account that automatically takes out 100 bucks every month, good for you. But there's other vehicles out there that you can set up automatically that will do the same thing. I mean, because you kind of get to instead of if you make sixteen hundred dollars a month and you put away a hundred um, before you do anything else you you get the mindset that you you're working with fifteen hundred dollars a month instead of sixteen because hello all of us out there we spend what we make sometimes we a lot of us spend more than what we make and and thank you credit cards <laughs> And, and some of them are handy and I do I'll do I'll show you how to use your credit cards to build wealth I'll show you how to use you but first you have to understand interest and, and I'm gonna get into that but pay your number the first step to, to to realizing and learning is and one of the first things I teach in my trainings is is you got to know your budget uh, I run a couple of businesses in real estate and I have the worst time when I lose sight of my budget anybody who's a business owner out there you understand and and it was my 
CPA that actually brought me back is, is she said, Curtis, I can't, you need to look over your, your taxes. You're, you're responsible to, to know that this stuff. And, and it was an eye opener because I was so busy on the little treadmill doing my real estate deals and stuff like that, that I didn't realize how much money I had or didn't have, um, and where it was going and where I was spending it, where I really didn't need to. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, just like Starbucks. I mean, um, everybody loves Starbucks. Well, most of us, I, but you get into this thing where you're, it's, you automatically, without even thinking about it, you will spend, and well, I know I did, spend easily five bucks, let's, I'm rounding, five bucks a day on Starbucks. Some of you spend more than five bucks a day. And you really don't realize how much that is until you, you do a budget. And one of the things I teach people do is for two weeks, two weeks, not just one week, two weeks, track everything you spend and then sit down at the end of the two weeks and, and look at that and multiply everything by two and that'll give you an idea of what you spend every month. And you'll be amazed. Some of you might be ashamed. You, you, if spending five bucks a day on Starbucks is 35 bucks a week. I mean, you're spending $140 a month. $140 a month easily. If you were in the same habit I was, I was probably closer to 200 a month on a coffee. Tasty one, but a coffee, you know, then you can switch to regular, back to regular coffee and get the little additives that make it tasty. But anyways, um, I already covered setting up an auto pay and I go over free money. Uh, free money is is basically when you have a 401k with a match. And I do an in-depth training on that to show you that basically if you don't have a, have a match, your company doesn't match your 401k, don't put money into a 401k. And I, and I, and I'll, and I show you why. Um, I think I have another another uh, blog about retirement that talks about it. So go and watch that blog and you'll see what I'm talking about. And, and it also tells you why a Roth would be preferred uh, over, over a traditional account. And so I'm not really gonna, gonna go uh, into that, uh, but many of my uh, postings on um, Investopedia is about inflation too. All the advisors, so far I haven't heard one of them that I've read or answered or been part of that has said anything besides myself about inflation. Inflation is on an average of 2%. So if you're, you're, if you're making 2% interest, you're actually not making anything at all. And I also do a training about uh, buying a house, you're really not making any money. Buying a house though is a form of automatic savings because you have an asset that is leveraged and I go into leveraging that's where you pay you know let's let's say you got an FHA loan you you paid three percent of and you're appreciating a, a hundred percent of the value of that that property er, every year and most real estate can average around eight percent a year so that's good you're ahead of inflation by six percent if you don't factor in all the taxes and you know anyways it gets into a lot of math so so buying a house unless you do my uh, mortgage reduction program you're really paying too much for that house and you're really not making anything but it's not your fault I'm gonna say that again it's not your fault the system is designed to do that to make you feel like you're 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 achieving and you're really just like that little hamster on a wheel or something. You, and now you know why mutual funds, life insurance companies, 
other insurance companies, banks, they're, they're, all, they're all making a lot of money. And it's because they understand interest. And, and anyways, this is, this is just one of those blogs that I'm going to go off in these different tangents as I go through this PDF that I produced. Um, life insurance. I got my life insurance license because I saw it as one of the greatest things to buy. I, and I had one when I was younger, and I, I wish I knew what I know now back then because I had cashed in my, my life insurance because I wanted to buy some real estate, and I got advice from a broker who, who told me to do that. And the guy at the insurance place, I, I remember, he said, do you really want to do this? And, and you know, I said resounding yes with a, actually a question mark because I wasn't really sure. I was being told to take that money out of, out of my my policy and use it to invest and and it, and it wasn't uh, looking back I, I realized it wasn't the best advice I I I was being told to do something so my so-called friend real estate broker that I was working for at the time could benefit from my investment um, anyways that's that's another story um, but life insurance, I have realized I was taught it as a wealth building strategy because, and, and what they tell you is, okay, your life insurance will make 4%, let's say, okay? My, mine's a indexed uh, universal life. It's doing better than that. Right now, it's averaging somewhere around 7%. Yeah, you could put money into... A vehicle that'll make you seven percent. A lot of you have money sitting in savings accounts or in CDs that are making less than one percent right now. I think that's crazy. Uh, and here's what it is: people are like, "Well, I, why do I want life insurance? It's only good when you die." No, it isn't. Life insurance. My my policy. I have long term care rider, which yes, part of the money I put in there does pay for that. Your part of your premium goes to paying for these other benefits, but most of it goes goes in and gets invested, just like your four hundred one k, right? Um, and you could draw on your life insurance policy later as tax free income. There, and you know, there's so many things you could do. And once your cash value is built up. You can borrow against that, and that's part of the wealth building strategies that, that I was taught. But caution, you, you have to do these things right. If you take a loan out of your policy, you have to pay it back. So if you take a loan out to invest it in something else, and that's a higher risk investment, and it, it fails, and you can't pay that policy, that life insurance uh, loan, it's called a loan because I'll tell you what, why in a second that loan back into your policy it can hurt your policy it, and depending on how much you borrowed out of it your policy could possibly collapse so and I teach you all this this is I was never taught this all I was taught was your your life insurance policy can earn four percent the cash value let's say it's built up to twenty thousand dollars you could borrow that twenty thousand dollars and I'm a real estate investor and a uh, private lender, uh, similar, you probably heard of hard money lenders, and you have probably heard that those hard money lenders charge real estate investors about 12% interest. So I could take my 20000 and make 12% interest, and it's a loan. So what happens is, let's say that cash value is 20000 it continues to earn the four to seven percent or whatever percent that that the index is is earning it that twenty thousand is almost like it is actually not taken out of my policy it stays there but i they secure the loan to me with my policy so there's it's like a lien against my policy so it ensures 
them that 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 loan will be paid back. So they give, and, and so they may loan it to me for let's say it's the same four percent. But here's the thing, folks, my cash value continues to earn that let's say four percent just for fun, um, and I go out and make twelve percent and have to pay four percent. So twelve minus four is eight percent. So I'm earning four percent and 12% and paying myself back by paying my loan back and allowing that to continue to grow also. So if you look at it as if they charge me 4% interest for the loan and they're paying me 4%, that's a wash, even though my policy is making around 7%. So, so if you look at life insurance, there's just so many benefits. The wealthy, most wealthy families buy life insurance for their children when they're born. And I'll show you why. Because you don't, you, you don't have to buy a big policy to, and they use it, they create a, <laughs> they create several things. They, they create a savings for their college. They create a retirement account, all, all in one investment because they could get their own loan. They could get their own loan to go to colleges. Anyways, let me get off of that. Also, I, I advise this person to put money in the real estate, but you have to understand the real estate market. You have to understand the, the, how the markets fluctuates. Uh, and I mentioned earlier, if you're gonna do that, get the mortgage reduction calculator because I can show you how to pay off that, that property in less than 10 years, depending on your income and everything and how much equity is in the property. I could show you how to pay off a 30 year mortgage in half that time. It's possible. It depends on what your resources are. And most of all, if you understand these concepts, because it's all about paying yourself. <laughs> and if you're, you're, you know, if you're renting, thank you, because I, you know, I invest in multifamily, so apartment complexes. And um, if you're renting, thank you, because you're paying for my investment, you know, if you're a renter. Anyways, um, always get the right advisor and implement your plan. You have to have your budget, your dreams. I go over that in the retirement one. Um, you know, find the experts. And also build your credit. And I talk about that in several of my other blogs is you want to build credit, but you want to do it with the right companies. Don't go with the department store stuff, Target or Macy's, whatever. Those credit cards really don't give you good FICO. They don't give they don't build your credit like if you were to with some of the majors. Majors are like Capital One, City, you know, banks, any banks. Um, larger banks, even the smaller banks, they're, they're, they don't impact your, your credit buildings, your FICO. They don't impact your FICO score as much. And you could Google, Google all that stuff. Now, I'm going to go into compounding interest because that's, that's what I was talking about. Here's 4%. You, you can see the 4% up here in the corner on this. Everything on here is making 4%. So if you have a child and you put $30 into a life insurance policy, here's $30, monthly deposit. Every month you put in $30. And yes, this goes up to 100 years. But $30, let's say at 20 years, we're, we're looking at $11,003. I mean, $30 is not a whole lot you're paying more than that every month on Starbucks. Uh, and in 20 years, you have $11,000. That's great. But yeah, my Starbucks is closer to 100, 200, but okay. So you look at the same child at $60 a month in 20 years, there's 22, right? So 150, it continues to go up. But also, let, let's say if they do really well in school, they get, you know, they get a free pass to, to college. 
this money continues to grow. So when by the time they're 60, their retirement is going to be closer probably to 70. That $150 you, you started for them and they carry it on, they're, they're up to almost a million dollars by retirement. You see, six, it, it jumps. It's called compounding. <laughs> it, compounding is amazing. Uh, here's here's if you put away four hundred dollars a month, which a lot of you can do. Four hundred dollars a month, you can find that if you just do that two week program, you, you're probably spending. I was easily four four maybe even more eight hundred on if I added up restaurants, right? Learn to learn to cook. I added up restaurants, coffees. Going out to the bar, yeah, but you know, I didn't have to drink as much. Well, I do, I buy more expensive drinks and drink less now. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, just those three things you, you look at where you're spending money on things that, that you don't even think about it, it'll probably add up to $800 a month. I have clients that we work with who have. A lot more, three thousand. Some have fifteen thousand dollars a month that they're 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 just putting in the wrong vehicles, and you want to compound that. And once again, four hundred one k is not your best investment. It is a good one if you're getting a company match. Do it. Go if the, if it, your match is two percent, get put in two percent. Not anymore, because what you. The reason is you want to diversify. You want to have several different things because what if, what if your four hundred one k does what I did? I had I probably had a, about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a four hundred one k at one point in my life when I took a look at it finally, and the, then the market tanked, and that I watched that almost overnight. One year, I I watched my four hundred one k almost drop by fifty percent. I mean, can you afford to throw away $75,000? You know, and, and that's what hap happens. It, it's recovered, but what if I put it in something that didn't have to recover? And I do trainings on that. It's called uh, negative returns. If you get, have negative returns on anything. So the, the power is in putting in the compound slow. The turtle wins the race. You know, it doesn't have to be fast money. Everybody's trying to sell you on, you know, invest in real estate because I was sold on that and you can make big money. Well, you can lose big money too. So it goes both ways. But let's say you have a child and you put away $400. Let's say $150. $150 in 80 years, and we're looking at almost a million dollars. Um, but that's at four percent, you know. Up here, four percent. We were we were looking at four percent here. Uh, let's see. The second chart I did was the seven percent. This is about what I'm earning on 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 my IUL, and I'm putting away substantially more than than this. Um, I should highlight those. I just noticed that on my spreadsheet. Um, but if you go back to the 150 and it earns, if it, if it were to earn what my IUL is earning now in 60 years, they'd have a million and a half, over a million and a half. But here's the here's another thing: in 20 years, when they're ready to go to college, this 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 is just to put ideas in your head. You have seventy eight thousand dollars. You know. I mean that's that's good for some colleges a couple years you know some others um, one year and you know anyways but it's probably a lot more than if you say plus think about it the life insurance if it has a certain riders like let let's say how many times have you heard of a, a young young person especially nowadays coming up with a critical illness well. If you have a policy, let's say, let's say, uh, I'm just going off the top of my head, 150 bucks. Let's say you have a 
policy on that child, well, the critical illness clauses in, in, in your the life insurance says if, if they're diagnosed with something cr for critical illness, um, they will pay out in some a percentage of that death benefit. So you could get 100, 150, depending on the policy, okay, cash in your bank account to pay for whatever you need to pay for. Think of how many of those families that are going through that with their with a child of theirs that wish they could they'd had 150 200 you know and it doesn't matter what age because that's that's based off the death benefit so if you you know if you have a policy a two hundred thousand dollar policy if they're if you get them insurance and this is why the wealthy do, does it because they know they don't have the crystal ball mine broke last year I'm like <laughs> There's a crack in my crystal ball. I can't see the future. None of us can. We don't know what's going to happen. But the nice thing is, if it does happen, I hope it never does. But if it does happen, you've got a buffer. And that's why I'm so excited about it. And that's why I went out and actually got my ins insurance license. is So I can learn more about what's available, what's best. Because... You know, I also talk about captive agents, um, about being like you go to a Chevy dealership, but you really want to buy a Ford. <laughs> you're 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 with the wrong agent. You're with the wrong salesperson. You need to go to independent, even even like mortgages. I mean, if you go to Wells Fargo, they're going to sell you a World Wells Fargo mortgage. They're not going to look at all the other mortgage companies out there that might have a better product you know and not all packages fit some people might want 15-year mortgages you might get a VA mortgage I mean there's there's just so many different things out there so don't get pigeonholed I called it stuck into one I, you might love Wells Fargo good they might not have the best pack mortgage for you um, same with life insurance. That's why I'm independent. So I can look behind the curtain and see see what everybody has and understand what everybody has and match that up to a client's needs. Not mine. It's not about me. That's that's why I said that, you know, don't 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 go by your advisor's plan. Go by your plan. You you have a plan and a good advisor will sit down with you and find out what your plan is. But if you look at this at 7% interest, you know, you compounding interest is beautiful. And that's what that's what life insurance does. It's a contract. It's basically a contract between you and that company saying, I will pay you this premium and you will insure me on these certain benefits. Just like your car insurance. You either have Minimum car insurance, which a lot of people do, or you have the full coverage, which covers this. This oh, and glasses included too. And so, if you get a cracked windshield, like I have right now, you you could call up your insurance company, and they'll replace it for free because it's part of your 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 insurance. Um, you have to look at look at what the benefits are, and there's a lot more benefits. It's not just about death. It, it's actually about protecting your assets and that's that's why I cover it I'll go over one more comparison I told you that you could take loans out and make more money so let's say if you're making 14 percent on that same hundred and fifty dollars in 60 years you're at 54 million dollars yeah at four four fourteen percent 14% compounded interest in 100 years will equal, oh my God, that looks like 14 billion with a B. Compounding interest. I'm telling you, this is, this is part of my basic trainings. And that's why I go over that. I, I want to thank you. I've got to get going. I probably went a lot longer than I should have on this blog. But I wanted to get this out this morning. And if the bright orange shirt is too much for you, I apologize. I'm going golfing this afternoon. So, you know, golfers wear bright, obnoxious outfits. I'm not going to show you my shorts. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyways, have a great day. It's a Wednesday. Um, I'll get this blog up as soon as, as soon as I can. And I thank you for listening to me. I hope something I said today sunk in and helped you. I even, I hope it made you curious enough to get on our list because so when I, we're, we're ready to launch our training that you become part of that that community because that community is going to be incredible. I'm going to I've already built alliances with several other experts in the industry, people a lot smaller than me. They're smarter than me. They're going to be uh, probably smaller too. I put on a few pounds, but <laughs> working on it. Um, hope you had fun too. So. And you can like me on Facebook. I'm, I'm there on Facebook uh, under Family Investor uh, online. If you're not at my website and you went to YouTube, I'm at familyinvestor.net. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day.